Good afternoon. Hello, guys. Nice to see you. How are you doing? Good afternoon. Hi. Hello. Good afternoon. <clears throat> Hello. Hi. Yeah, I'm fine. Hi. Thank you. How are you? Okay, so like short recall of our um, previous lecture, we um, practiced and learned uh, how to um, determine electrical field in the space around continuous electric uh, charges, the continuum of electric charges, which are distributed along some um, space in one, two, or three dimensions. So it could be either um, quantified by linear density of electric charge surface density or uh, bulk density. <clears throat> so we did some uh, examples of determining electric field uh, vectors next to such continuums of um, electric charge. And today uh, we will deal with uh, uh, electric field flux. Uh, but before that, we will introduce shortly the uh, concept of electrical field lines, uh, which are uh, introduced in order to um, allow uh, clear visualization of electric uh, field. So let me uh, share my Green for the beginning. Okay, so um, electric field lines. Uh, first of all, the key requirement for um, building these electric field lines um, that the tangential to each of this point of electric field line is. Um, parallel to electric field vector in each point. And uh, as you see here with these arrows, it's shown that um, electric field lines as similar as electric field vector, uh, they kind of, so, so electric field lines oriented in the same direction as electric field vector, and they originate at positive, chargers and they are terminated and negative charges. So um, another important feature which should be um, highlighted, um, density of electric field lines is proportional um, to the um, strengths of electric field in that area. So the more uh, electric field lines per um, unit area uh, you can see uh, the higher electric field is there in terms of its magnitude. So for instance, if you uh, see uh, here an example with two uh, charges, positive and negative, and positive is um, twice larger than negative charge, obviously positive charge will create stronger electric field. And uh, um, you can see that uh, there are more electric field uh, lines originated uh, at this um, positive charge than uh, terminated on negative charge uh, because the uh, magnitude of their electric charges uh, is different. <clears throat> so that is a um, very uh, short introduction of this concept of electric field lines. And that will be useful for us in um, the further consideration of um, electric uh, flux, which we are going to start right now. So I stop sharing and uh, let me switch to our slides.
And now let us give a definition of electric fuel uh, flux. Um, we can mark it as product of electric field <clears throat> at a um, given point uh, and area which is perpendicular to electric field vector. So units for electric uh, field flux are Newton times meter square divided by Coulomb. And um, what is important to uh, consider here, it's not always that area which we uh, deal with is perpendicular to electric field. So in general, um, if we have such case, for instance, we have um, surface. And electric field vector. So this is our electric field vector. Um, and this vector n is normal um, unit vector to the uh, surface. So there is some angle. Let's mark it angle alpha between the electric field vector and the unit vector, uh, like unit normal vector to the surface, uh, which we consider, let's say surface A. So in this case, our electric field uh, flux will be equal to magnitude of electric field vector times area of this uh, surface times cosine, sorry, not cosine of this angle alpha between the electric field vector and normal um, to the surface. So if we have our angle uh, alpha, uh, equal to, uh, for instance, 90 degrees. So it means the electric field vector kind of uh, sliding on the surface. Uh, if alpha is equal 90 degrees or uh, pi over two in radians, then the flux of this electric field through the surface will be equal to zero because uh, <clears throat> it will not penetrate into the uh, surface, it will just slide next to its, uh, its surface. So that is general um, definition of electric field flux, assuming that we have uniform electric field all over this uh, area. However, that is obviously not true in general case, and electric field can uh, change its um, magnitude uh, <clears throat> in different uh, points of space. And uh, in order to address these features of uh, not uniform electric field, what we need to do, we need to divide <clears throat> um, large area into small pieces uh, and let us introduce some vector delta A vector, which is delta A area of a small piece of a big surface <coughs> uh, times N unit vector. N unit vector is uh, normal unit vector to this small element of the surface delta A. So we, divide surface in such small elements that within each small element of the surface, it is possible to consider electric field as constant. So it changes. However, um, within this small element of the surface, um, it 
um, the change of the electric field is negligibly small. So we can assume that within this small uh, element of the surface, electric field vector remains constant. <clears throat> so that is very important because we can apply the same uh, concept as we described above. So we can say that the electric field flux, um, let's mark it as I through surface element I equals to electric field, which is considered to be constant in this, um, within this small element of the surface I times delta A I, which is the area of this small element, uh, times cosinus uh, some angle theta I, cosinus theta I. And this angle theta I is the angle between um, the electric field vector and this uh, uh, unit vector and uh, which is the normal to the small element of the surface delta AI. So in this case, we can write that this will be equal to EI vector dot product delta AI vector. Uh, <clears throat> so that is dot product, there is a cross product, uh, but in this case, we have a dot product, which um, actually gives us a scalar mm, value. Uh, so uh, electric uh, field flux uh, is a scalar uh, value. So we, um, if we want to get the total electric field flux through this big surface, which we previously divided in small pieces, then we need to sum up uh, electric field flux uh, through each of these small elements. So we can write electric field flux total is equal to the sum over all small elements i e i vector dot product with delta a i vector. So this will give us the total uh, flux, assuming that um, we divided this um, big surface in small enough areas, uh, segments, in order to assume uh, electric field constant within these small segments of the surface. Uh, however, if we go one step further, and make this um, even uh, smaller when we consider this small element area approaching to zero. <clears throat> so we divide it to very many and uh, extremely small um, elements of the surface. Then we can replace this uh, sum with integral. So the total electric field flux will be given as integral over the surface of this um, uh, surface, which we consider um, of dot product E uh, electric field vector times D A vector. So that is the uh, most general definition of electric field flux, uh, which is given via the integral of a uh, dot product of electric field vector and this um, vector dA, which is, uh, again, just to make it clear, dA vector is a very small uh, area of this segment, which we consider approaching to zero times um, it's normal unit vector. So that is how we determine in general case, uh, because in this case, we can um, address uh, any uh, shape of the surface and also uh, any distribution of electric field uh, within this uh, 
uh, space where the surface is located. So <clears throat> it is often necessary to calculate the flux of electric field through a closed surface. Uh, why closed surface is so important in this regards? Because any surface of a um, three-dimensional body is actually a closed surface. So it's a surface which divides space in uh, two uh, parts, internal part and external part. So let me share again my screen and we will consider one general case of electric field flux through the closed surface. <clears throat> so now let us assume we have this uh, closed surface and it is placed in some external electric field. Uh, here we have electric field lines. So if we consider kind of three uh, segments of this closed surface of our interest, segment one, two, and three. So let's see what's going on with surface, uh, with this segment one. Uh, here we have electric field vector, uh, then this normal vector to the surface. And uh, uh, the angle theta is smaller than 90 degrees. So it means that the cosines of this um, angle will be positive and uh, flux, electric field flux will be positive. So if we go to point two, where we have this uh, segment, which is kind of parallel to the electric field vector. So the um, normal <coughs> um, of this uh, segment area um, is perpendicular to electric field vector. Then um, as we mentioned and discussed uh, previously, um, electric field flux will be equal uh, to zero. There will be no uh, flux of electric field through such surface. Now in this point three, when we have different orientation of our segment, um, surface segment, we see that there is a, um, this angle theta between the electric field vector and normal to the surface is larger than by like 90 degrees uh, or pi over two radians. That means that cosinus of this angle theta will be negative and um, electric field flux through this uh, surface at given orientation of electric field uh, will be, <coughs> will be uh, negative. So now, when we look at this closed surface uh, in general, we can uh, see that all these electric field lines which go into the surface, they will cause some negative uh, electric field flux. And those electric field lines which go outside of the surface, they will give positive electric field uh, flux. Uh, the net uh, electric field flux through the closed surface will be determined uh, by the ratio between number of um, those, like by the difference between the um, number of uh, electric field lines which enter the surface, the closed surface and those which um, go outside it. Uh, so it can be like total uh, electric field flux can be either um, negative, it could be equal to zero or will be positive. And um, what will be in which case, uh, we will discuss a bit later when we uh, consider Gauss law, which finds a relationship between electric field flux and um, electric, um, 
charge, which is enclosed by the surface, like closed surface. Uh, but at this uh, point, we just uh, consider main features of um, electric field flux through the closed surface. Uh, yes, we have a question. You're welcome. So as you said, the total electric, electric flux can be either negative or positive. Isn't uh, it- Or uh, equal to zero. Oh, uh, so isn't it uh, only zero because uh, as many the electric lines, power lines enter the object, no, mm -hmm. they leave, Th that number leaves the object. You are absolutely true. If we consider a closed surface, which does not have any electric charges inside it, neither negative nor positive, um, then or their net electric charge is zero. Uh, and then this is the case. We place it in external electric field, like shown here, and then there is no other option because if electric field line enters the closed surface, it should go out and then it will cancel each other, the contribution towards the net electric field flux. Eventually it will be zero. However, if we have some charges inside, uh, they will change this uh, situation and that we will um, discuss uh, in details a little bit later in the scope of Gauss uh, law. Oh, thank you. I just, thank you for the clarification. I just forgot about charges. Yeah, yeah, it's, that's okay, no problem. Thank you for your question. Okay, so now, uh, since we already established this um, concept of electric field flux, considered it also on the example of some closed uh, surface, uh, placed in external electric field and realize that electric field flux can be either positive or negative, depending uh, what we have uh, either entering or uh, exit of electric field lines through this closed surface. Uh, we can um, proceed further and probably uh, let us um, show some, like, some example of determining electric field flux through a closed surface uh, with certain um, symmetry. So it makes our um, life uh, a bit easier, uh, but it will also allow us to uh, show that indeed uh, the net electric field flux through the closed surface without any charges inside will be equal to zero. <clears throat> so let us do it. So sharing. Now let's go to a new slide. And uh, let's consider such cylindric closed um, surface. So we have system of coordinates x. Why? <clears throat> Here, D. And uh, we have a cylinder. Which is a line um, along x is x. Um, this cylinder possesses um, three surfaces. So we have surface A1, surface A2, and surface A3. So we have kind of base and side surface. So we want to find electric field flux through this uh, closed surface, assuming that we have electric field vector E also aligned along axis X. 
So we need to consider, obviously, uh, normal unit vectors for each of our surfaces. So here will be N1. Here will be N2. And here will be N3. And um, as I mentioned above, uh, we want to find the total electric field flux. So total electric field flux will be equal to the sum of electric field fluxes through each of our surfaces, which form this uh, closed surface, cylindric closed surface. P2 plus P3. So let us see what we get. P1 is equal to E times A1. So we have this dot vector product. <clears throat> In other form, we can write that it's equal to E times A1 times cosinus theta between electric field vector and normal to the surface. Uh, normal to the surface is parallel to electric field vector, but it's aligned in opposite direction. So the angle will be 180 degrees or pi radians. <coughs> so that will be uh, this cosine of 180 degrees is equal to minus unity. And eventually we get minus E times A one. So that is uh, the electric field flux through the surface A1. And you can see that indeed we uh, have the case when electric field line enters the uh, surface, um, it causes uh, this negative electric field flux. So now, um, let us consider electric field flux through surface A2. So P2 is equal to electric field vector times A2 vector. That is E times A2 times cosinus theta. In this case, they are parallel and in aligned in the same direction. So this angle theta is equal to zero degrees and cosine zero degrees will be just unit. So we have E times A2. Now, um, obviously we need to consider electric field flux through the um, surface number three. So that will be F3 equal to a uh, electric field vector times A3 vector. Here, cosinus theta. And what, do you have any ideas what it will be equal to? Zero. Zero. Because the angle is 90. 90 degrees. degrees. You are right. Here we have 90 degrees. And this will be zero. So obviously our uh, electric field flux through surface A3 will be equal to zero. <laughs> uh, now we follow this um, equation and find the total electric field flux. So that will be equal to minus E times A1 plus E times A2 uh, plus zero. Assuming that we have a cylinder, A1 is equal to A2 and 
eventually we get zero. So that is um, uh, some quantitative description of what we were talking uh, before. Uh, it's just easy to uh, calculate because we take advantages of the symmetry of this um, case. Uh, however, um, that is a good uh, specific example, which shows that the um, electric field flux through the closed surface without any electric charge inside is equal to zero. So that is true, obviously, when we don't deal with electric charges. However, um, now we can uh, finally uh, start discussing the Gauss law and uh, consider some surface with electric charge inside it. So let us do it now. Um, let's have some sphere with cross section of the sphere. In the center of this sphere, we place a positive electric charge. <coughs> the radius of the sphere will be R. Now, let us consider some small element of the surface of this sphere. Here is vector delta A i. It's area of this small area of this small uh, segment times normal vector. <coughs> and that will be also a direction of electric field vector, which um, is formed by positive uh, charge. Uh, Q placed in the center of this sphere. Since this vector, this charge is placed in the center, it creates spherically symmetrical electric field around it. <clears throat> and that's why the normal to the sphere surface, like external surface, uh, and um, electric field vector, they will be parallel and uh, aligned in the same direction. So in this case, this unit uh, dot product of two vectors, E um, electric field vector and delta A vector will be equal actually to the product of their magnitudes, E times delta A. Uh, we can put here I also to say that it's one of many uh, small uh, areas. <coughs> Now, uh, we want to find total electric field flux, uh, <clears throat> which is created by this positive uh, charge through the spherical uh, surface around it. So total electric field flux is equal to the integral. So when we want to integrate over a closed surface, we use this sign of integral, showing that it's in the integration over a closed um, surface, which is our sphere. It's a closed surface of <clears throat> scalar uh, product E vector times dA vector. Assuming this previously uh, explained uh, feature of this product for this particular case, we can write that it's equal to integral over all surface of uh, just product of magnitudes E and dA. So assuming uh, the symmetry of this uh, case, uh, electric doesn't matter which small 
area segment we will consider, it will be at the same distance R from the electric charge, means that electric field uh, magnitude will be the same. So it will remain constant. If something remains constant, we can take it out from the integral. That will be equal to <coughs> um, electric field magnitude times integral over the surface dA. And uh, um, we actually know the magnitude of this electric field. Can you give me some suggestions how we determine electric field magnitude at distance r from this charge Q? That's equal to Ke constant times Q divided by R squared. So actually it comes from the Coulomb law. And uh, from that, <clears throat> by dividing the uh, Coulomb law with uh, test uh, charge Q naught, we can get this. We actually did it previously. We got the expression for electric field. Um, created by a point um, charge. So um, this part we know this constant. Now what is this? Any ideas? Integral over close. Just area? Exactly, it is just area. So that's maybe not, uh, very clear form of your like not a custom form for uh, defining area, uh, but indeed it is just area. And we know the area of a sphere. So it is equal to four pi times r squared. <clears throat> so looks like we already have everything we need. So we can combine these parts together. Total electric field flux is equal to Ke times Q divided by R square times, instead of this integral, we have four pi R square and eventually this R square, they cancel out, we have four pi times Ke times Q. Now we can also recall what is Ke. You remember guys? One over four pi epsilon naught. One over four pi epsilon naught, exactly. So if we substitute it here, um, then 4 pi will be uh, cancel out and we will get uh, Q divided by epsilon naught. So epsilon naught is a constant, it's permittivity of free space, a universal constant. So means that there is only one parameter which defines the electric field flux through a uh, sphere, uh, and that is electric charge Q, which is placed inside this sphere. So there are no other parameters. Electric field flux is equal to Q divided by some constant. So some constant is just, uh, uh, it's not a parameter of the system, it's universal constant. So the parameter of the system is how big electric charge is placed inside this sphere. So that we have shown quantitatively and there are no questions to you. However, it was easy to do because you know, we have this uh, symmetry case. We have spher spherically symmetrical electric field caused by point uh, charge 
And also we have uh, obviously uh, the symmetry of the sphere. Um, however, let us consider a more general case and uh, it will look like this. We have some positive charge and some random shape surface. It doesn't have any symmetry. So the question will be, what will be the like the electric field flux of um, uh, in this case when we have uh, arbitrary shape surface, closed surface? So if we consider a sphere inside here, so we have shown already that electric field flux of all these electric field lines which originate at positive charge placed inside this sphere will be equal, let's write it here, to Q divided by epsilon zero. So we know that uh, electric field flux, net electric field flux, will be defined by the uh, difference between number of electric field lines which enter the surface, closed surface, and those which go out from this closed surface. If we have, for instance, five, as shown here, electric field lines which go out from the closed surface, spherical surface, uh, and electric field flux is equal to this quantity. It means that there will be the same electric field flux through the uh, arbitrary shape uh, surface because it is also penetrated like, uh, by uh, the same five electric field uh, lines. So um, electric field uh, flux through the uh, surface of uh, closed, sur uh, closed surface of a sphere and arbitrary shape surface will be the same and that will be equal it will be defined by this equation. So that is a general uh, case. And actually the statement of uh, Gauss law, which states that electric field flux is through a closed uh, uh, surface is always equal to um, the electric, like proportional, not equal exactly, proportional to um, electric uh, charge, which is enclosed in this surface, uh, divided by some constant um, epsilon uh, naught, which is permittivity of free space. So with this, I would like to summarize our discussion. So we, uh, for today, we um, considered the concept, introduced a new concept of ele electrical, uh, electric field flux. Um, describe its main features, what, how it's quantified, and uh, uh, how we deal with electric field flux through a closed surface. Um, based on this uh, experience, we derive the uh, electric field flux through a closed surface, through this uh, cylindric surface, and have shown that indeed we have if we place closed uh, surface inside electric field and there are no electric charges in this surface, um, then electric field flux will be equal to zero. Um, and also we introduce this Gauss law, which gives us the relationship between the electric charge enclosed by uh, surface uh, and um, electric field flux uh, through this closed surface. Uh, so that is very important relationship. We definitely should remember it because um, later it will be very handy to apply this concept to determine uh, electric field uh, vector of different in different cases. Uh, so uh, we will continue next lecture on Wednesday discussing uh, features of this uh, 
Gauss law, but as for now, we already introduced it and have shown that um, electric field flux through closed surface is defined by Q, electric charge enclosed by the surface, divided by epsilon naught, which is permittivity of free space. Thank you very much for attention. If you have questions, you're welcome. So I hope that I see you guys next time on Wednesday. Take care and have a good day. Thank you. Thank you. Have a nice day too. Goodbye. Goodbye. See you later. Bye bye. Thank you. Goodbye.